गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन माई सेल्फ प्रोफेसर नीलिमा प्रदीप तिदार असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ माइक्रोबायोलॉजी एंड द टॉपिक विच आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस टूडे इज वेरियस बायोकेमिकल टेस्ट और बायोकेमिकल रिएक्शन नाउ दिस बायोकेमिकल टेस्ट इट हैज वेरियस वाइड एप्लीकेशन एंड सिग्निफिकेंस ऑल्सो एवरी ऑर्गेनिज्म इट हैज सर्टन यूनिक बायोकेमिकल पाथवेज विच हेल्प्स एस to produce different set of reactions so we can make use of this particular biochemical reactions for carrying out the identification of the organism so thus this biochemical test it has wide applications in clinical microbiology wherein it is helpful for carrying out the identification of pathogenic organism from the clinical sample as well as in research also this biochemical tests help us to carry out the identification of the organism So today in my presentation I am going to enlist various different types of biochemical test which have been useful for carrying out the identification of various pathogenic organism The various tests are indol test bogus prosker and methyl red test citrate utilization urea test motility and triple sugar iron agar Now let us begin with the first test indol test For performing this particular test we generally inoculate the organism into tryptone water incubate the tubes at a temperature of 37 degree centigrade for 24 hours and after incubation the reaction it has been visualized by addition of coax reagent which gives the formation of a brick red color the principle behind this particular test is goes about like this tryptone tryptophan that is the amino acids which are present in the medium they are broken down by the enzyme tryptophanase into indol pyruvic acid and ammonia and this indol we can carry out its detection by addition of coax reagent so this is how the test looks like when it is observed after addition of the coax reagent so pink color formation it indicates the positive reaction and no pink color as as if you can see out over here indicates the absence of formation of indol now we'll move on towards the next test that is methyl red or and bogus prosker test for performing these two types of test we carry out the inoculation in a common broth called as glucose phosphate broth and then after incubation we divide this broth into two tubes and add the different reagent for observing either methyl red or bogus prosker test So to begin with the tubes are incubated with the test organism they are incubated at 37 degree centigrade for 24 hours and after incubation they are been divided into two tubes to perform either the methyl red or bogus prosker now here the principle behind this particular test is that either the organism after carrying out utilization of glucose which is present in the medium they follow the acidic pathway and they form mixed acids which decrease the ph and after addition of methyl red indicator the color appears red in color if you add now there are certain organisms which instead of forming acidic pathway or utilizing the acidic pathway and forming mixed acid they form a neutral pathway and they form the compound called as acetyl methyl carbonyl and this compound it can be detected by addition of the barrett's reagent that is barrett's a and barrett's b which consist of 40% koh and alpha alpha naphthalamine you get the observation of pink color so actually here we can say that after incubating either the organism follow the methyl red pathway that is formation of mixed acids and after addition of methyl red they give red color or they form a neutral pathway and they form acetyl methyl carbonyl and they results into formation of a pink color so this is how the reaction looks like when you perform methyl red test or when you perform bogus prosker test so brick pink color or red color it indicates the positive methyl red test and here in the formation of a pink color again in bogus prosker results in the positive bogus prosker test now the next test uh, that we are going to progress ahead is called as the citrate utilization test for performing this particular type of a biochemical test again 
you either have to carry out the streaking of the culture onto cement citrate or coza citrate slant and the slants are further incubated at 37 degree centigrade for 24 hours now what is this reaction or principle behind this particular citrate test so citrate which is present in the medium it is broken down by the organism to form pyruvate which is then further broken down to form carbon dioxide water and sodium the sodium is further results into formation of sodium carbonate which increases the ph and therefore after incubation the slants that appear it will be blue in color so therefore blue reaction indicates a positive citrate utilization test and the slant which remains as it is that is green in color carries out the negative citrate utilization test so these collective of these four tests that is indol methyl red vogus prosker and citrate it is also given a common heading to be as imvic so this test are generally performed for all the members which belong to enterobacteriaceae family and when we want to discriminate or identify the organisms belonging to this family we particularly perform this four test into common now to move ahead with the next test is the urease test now here we determine the ability of the organism to produce the enzyme urease for performing this particular test we use christensen's urea broth which has urea as one of its component we incubate the test organism into this particular urea broth after incubation we we inoculate the test organism into this particular urea broth after inoculation we incubate the tubes at 37 degree centigrade for 24 hours on the next day we observe the formation of pink color now pink coloration is because of the ability of the organism to produce the enzyme urease which breaks down urea and it forms ammonium and carb carbon dioxide ammonia which has been liberated it changes the ph it is a strong it results into formation of a strong base which increases the ph of the medium and this increase in the ph it causes the formation of the change in the color indicator that is phenol red to form pink color so this is how the result it looks like a pink coloration it indicates positive urea test as well as when the tubes color it remains as it is it indicates a negative urea test specifically when we want to carry out the identification of the organism which specifically cause the uti infection or urinary tract infection we go for following this particular test because this test helps in identifying the causative agent from the urinary tract infection as all the pathogens from the uti or urinary tract has an ability of producing this particular urea test or urease enzyme now motility is again one more important test i we cannot we will not call it actually a biochemical test but it is a test which has been required for determining or identification of the organism so here in you can see the tubes and uh, you all can see over here the motility of the organism if the organisms are been motile you will see the growth of the organism entirely and if you see the organisms they are non motile then you will see the growth only at the inoculated portion so this is the inoculated portion and you will see the growth of the organism only adjoining to the inoculated portion and here you all can see the growth which has been accompanied all throughout the media so there are certain pathogenic organisms which are highly motile and there are some which are non motile in nature so motility can be also considered to be as an criteria for carrying out the identification and knowing or the name of the organism so therefore this motility test helps us so you all can see the growth and according to it we can identify or go for determining the motility of the organism now for the progressing ahead the next test that we are going to focus on is the triple sugar iron agar this test makes utilization of the three important sugars that is glucose lactose and sucrose the indicator which has been used in this particular medium is phenol red which 
is in the acidic condition it is in the yellow color and in the basic condition it results into formation of a red color now apart from this particular three sugars the triple sugar iron agar it also shows presence of ferric ammonium citrate which helps us to identify whether the organism has an ability of producing h2s gas formation or not to for the progress ahead to perform this particular test we first inoculate the tsi slant into two ways that is we inoculate the the slant portion and we stab the culture and we inoculate the butt portion also so after carrying out the inoculation we incubate it at 37 degree centigrade for 24 hours and the results it looks like this so if there is no utilization of the sugar you will see the tsi slant remaining as it is without change in the color in the butt portion as well as in the slant portion but if you see the ability of the organism to utilize one of the sugar that is either glucose or lactose but the other sugar that is sucrose is not utilized then in that case you will see the formation of a yellow color in the butt portion as well as the slant remains as it is in the slant portion that is pink coloration so this indicates that so the second tube it indicates that ki there is utilization of either one of the two sugars by the organism and the third sugar it remains unutilized now here you all can see the butt ha it has uplifted this indicates that there is huge amount of gas formation during the utilization of the sugar and this gas has uplifted the butt and here you can see the movement of the butt towards the upper side as i've said ki apart from the utilization of the three sugars this tsi slant it also is helpful for determining whether the organism has an ability of producing h2s gas or not so if the organism forms h2s gas it converts ferric ammonium citrate and here you all can see the h2s gas formation with a black coloration so this black coloration indicates the positive formation of h2s gas now by using this particular biochemical test that is triple sugar nine agar you test three important criteria first is the ability of the organism to utilize all the three different types of sugars that is glucose lactose and sucrose as well as we also see whether they are able to form excessive amount of gas after utilization of the sugar and the third thing that is whether it is able to form h2s gas or not so here in this particular representation you all can see how the results of tsi slant we can carry out its differentiation ki whether it utilizes one sugar two sugar whether it has an ability of forming h2s gas or not so that was all about the end of the various biochemical tests thank you